Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us, at least good morning to those of you on the West Coast. Thanks for joining us here at Helena College Holy Cross. You're actually in the president's office. And I enjoy doing these so we can come to know each other better. And you know that at the end of this broadcast, you can actually send us questions and I'll do my best to answer them. I'd like to take just a few moments to allow you to see a very brief video that outlines what Helena College Holy Cross is all about. Stay tuned. I am the inheritance of your parents. Born from their courage, love, and sacrifice. An unshakable trust in God, the expectation of a better life in the new world. I am your Hellenic heritage, the intellectual, educational, and spiritual center of the Greek Orthodox Church of America. I stimulate, develop, and sustain ordained and lay vocations. I instruct and root Greek language and culture into the minds and hearts of our children. I am the bridge between your past and present, a part of life's most precious moments. I am your parish priest. I baptize and marry you and your children. I bury your parents and loved ones. I am the choir director who chants sacred services. I am your children's Greek school teacher and Goya advisor. The chaplain who administers the sacraments to the U.S. Armed Forces. The nurse who cares for you in sickness. The social worker who comforts you. The entrepreneur who innovates global business and technology. The missionary proclaiming the gospel unto all ends of the world for those who seek the truth. I love all people. I serve all people. I welcome all people. I am Hellenic College Holy Cross. I am the one and only accredited Orthodox Christian College in the Western Hemisphere. I am the oldest and largest Orthodox Christian theological school in North America. I am the continuation of the one, holy, Catholic and Apostolic Church. I educate our children in a devotional environment of Christian fellowship and respect. I honor and preserve all we have learned and what is to be revealed. I inspire prayer and growth in the Orthodox faith. I am the Holy Hill, a beacon of Greek Orthodoxy and Hellenism in North America, the steward of Christ's promise of abundant life and salvation to generations, past, present, and future. I am Hellenic College Holy Cross. I am your school. I am your faith. I am your tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed that brief video. I want to talk with you a little bit today about Hellenic College and Holy Cross, our school, our faith, and our tomorrow. And the best way to do that is to speak about our students. I have the lives of two students that I want to share with you. And unfortunately, I have to read them to you because I don't have a teleprompter yet. But I think you'll enjoy them once I do. The first one is Ambrin Pasha. Doesn't sound like a Greek name, does it? Ambrin is a first-year student in the Master Divinity program. Ambrin was raised by her artist mother in India, who instilled in her a deep awareness for the issues of women and marginalized, marginalization in India. Her mother's artistic leaning and affinity to Buddhism led her to explore Buddhism and Hinduism for a spiritual solution to the injustices against women and the marginalized in India while pursuing her master's in English literature at Delhi University. She was determined, though, to make a difference in resolving the issues of injustice in India. Ambrin chose film as her medium to highlight the causes that were meaningful to her. Her decision brought her to the University of Florida, where both of my, two of my children went, actually, where she received funding and a graduate assistantship that enabled her to finish her studies. It's a tremendous school. 
After graduating with an award-winning thesis film from the Documentary Film Institute, then housed in the University of Florida in Gainesville, Anburn produ produced documentary films and fundraising materials for the International Orthodox Christian Charities. We know that as IOCC. On issues of human rights in the Balkans and Africa, later working in television in Serbia. This is where the story gets very interesting. It was in Serbia that Ambrin learned about Mother Maria of Paris, and she became an Orthodox Christian. She came to represent the Orthodox faith in action. The film captures Mother Maria of Paris, who tended to homeless refugees in Paris and rescued as many Jews as possible after Paris fell to the Germans in 1940. Mother Maria of Paris is forever memorialized in Yad Yashem in Israel as one of the righteous among nations for taking the place of a young woman who was sent to the gas chamber at Ravensbrück concentration camp, applying to Hellenic College Holy Cross with the intention of gaining a deeper theological basis for her work. She currently works on her film while attending classes and working part-time at the OCN Media Laboratory that was established on our campus. Not surprisingly, every class she has taken has given her insights on how to tell her story, keeping in sight the beauty and the richness of the Orthodox Christian faith. Her professors keep up with her. It's tough to do, and they follow her progress. She says that she's fortunate to be in this right place at the right time with professors and colleagues who are open and willing to help guide her in producing that film. There's another student I want to share with you, Elias Pappas. He's a young man. He's the second student that I'm going to speak about. He's a first year religious studies student who is already looking ahead to graduating from Hellenic College. Now he just began, he's a freshman, and then working toward a Master of Divinity at Holy Cross. Elias wants to serve the church in any way he can and recently shared that passion with children at an orphanage in Mexico, Project Mexico. Elias was among 32 students this year on our campus during what most people know as spring break. We call it real break with the OCF, but this was not part of OCF. This was a different entity. And these students went, 32 of them, led by 12 other graduates of our school. That means there were 44 students this year, students connected to Hellenic College Holy Cross who went out to do missionary work and not just do the normal spring break, I guess you could call it craziness. In just four days, the group that went to Project Mexico built a home for six and spent the rest of the time praying and playing and eating with the children at the orphanage. Elias is part of the campus activity, Orthodox Christian Fellowship, Mission Committee, Wood Conservancy Club, which I didn't know we had. I just learned that. I go out and look at the environment. That's a very important part. Our mission committee, our Byzantine choir, he's extremely active. He's filled, filled with the zeal for the Lord. That's just two of the 185 students that currently reside and study on our campus. I want to tell you it's a very special place. This past week, I also traveled with the seniors of Holy Cross School of Theology, the Master of Divinity, Master of Theological Studies students. And we went to the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese for their orientation. It was an eye-opener. There they learned from all of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocesan departments what it is they offer, who are the, what are the resources that are available to them as they leave the campus to go into the parishes to serve the people. You see, graduates of our school are not graduates that just think about themselves. These are people who are out there doing the Lord's work, both men and women who travel around the country doing that. I want to share some other things with you. Many people ask me as I travel around the country, how can we help, Father? Or should we even help? Let me just put it very straight to you. Without your help, we don't have a school. And without this school, our church in America doesn't have a future. It's very simple. This is where the future leaders are going to come from, the clergy and the laity. And you know that without a strong army, 
there's no way we're ever going to win the so-called spiritual war that we're in. So there's a few things that you can do for us. The first is you can pray for us. This is Great Lent. What better time to be praying for someone else or something else than now? Of course, it's a time of introspection, but it's also a time for almsgiving, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. That's what Great Lent is all about. The second is you can continue to support us financially. I know many of you are, and we are so grateful for those gifts, those precious gifts that you give us. Without those, we can't do it. I'll give you an example. The annual budget of the school is about $12 million. Six million of that is covered through various funds that come to the school. But we have to raise every year $6 million. That's about $16,000 per day. So you can imagine the tremendous burden that we have. But I want you to know that we don't look at it as a burden. And we also don't look upon each and every one of you as a dollar sign. That's not what we're about. We're about relationships. Because we know that if we can produce the best students from this school, you will see that. And then you will react because you can believe in a future, a bright future. I know the world right now is a little bit crazy. And I won't go into the political realm because we know what's going on there. So let's stay within our own realm, which is our faith. We actually have a message to offer. The Orthodox Christian faith cannot encircle the wagons and protect its people. The Orthodox Christian Church has to go out into the world and proclaim the message of Christ, the salvation. And if we don't do that, who's going to do it? Someone else will. And we know what usually happens when there is a, a vacuum of information. Somebody else fills that vacuum, and they don't always fill it with the right things for us and our children. Another thing you can do for us is the parish partner program. Is your parish a parish partner? Ask your parish priest. And if he isn't, say, why? Why not, Father? And join us. Call our Institutional Advancement Office and see what you can do to become a parish partner. It's very, very important because by partnering with us, we can then partner with you. Most priests ask us every year, could you send us a chanter for Holy Week? Is there someone that can help us with Sunday school? Is there someone that can help us with our youth group? That's what we do. We create partnerships with you. So please do that. Ask your parish priest about it. The other is to host a, what we call a PEG. You know, we're into acronyms over here. Presidential Engagement Gathering. I travel around the country constantly and meet with people, and I love to do that. So if your parish would like us to come there, or you'd like to put together a group of 20 to 50 people, and you feel that by coming there, we can share the message of our school, please do so. Call my office, 617-850-1280. You can speak to Kathleen, my assistant, and we'll ha be happy to set something up and visit you in your parish. Another important thing you can do for us is to recruit students. Now you say, well, Father, you know, my children to go to Hellenic College Holy Cross? The real question is, why not? Why not consider it an alternative? Why not make it one of the schools that your students, your children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews apply to? Or come for a semester of faith. Or send them to the Crossroad program. Tremendous programs on campus. This summer alone, there'll be five summer programs running simultaneously. We don't shut down in May. May just kicks off the next quarter of the year. You can also visit our bookstore. The bookstore is undergoing a tremendous renovation with new items coming in from all over the world. Those of you that will attend the Clergy Lady Congress this year in Nashville, Tennessee, we'll see a brand new bookstore. You can go to holycrossbookstore.com 
and there you can support us, especially during Great Lent, if there are books that you want to buy or the new Divine Liturgy book that's now out. These are things that you can do, and they do help the school by doing them. Finally, let me say before I'll take uh, some of your questions that we are the only Orthodox Christian college, school of theology, and seminary of its kind in the Western Hemisphere. This school has a great future, and with your help, I know it's going to be even better. I'm not pessimistic in any way, shape, or form. When you meet these young students like Elias and Ambrin and all the others that are here, you'll see what I'm talking about. Thank you for being with us today. We're going to try to answer some of your questions. I'll see which ones are coming in, and we'll have a conversation. Do we have any? Okay, very good. Thank you, Mugur. Will the seminary ever start a yearly altar service program? Absolutely. We definitely want to do that. We want to begin. We have appointed, thank you. We have appointed a, a presidential academic affairs committee. It's made up of professionals in the world of academia that are part of our board of trustees. And we're now looking at both undergraduate and graduate as well as retreats that can be done on campus. Uh, Subdeacon Athanasius sent us this question and uh, certainly, here Kevin, you can give me that. Certainly that is um, something that we want to do. This past weekend, just for example, I served the Divine Liturgy here and we had over 50 young people from all over the country, Florida, um, let's see, Chicago, and New Jersey. So, yes, we want to do that. Another question. I enjoy the news from Holy Cross. Will you ever send out articles or meditations on the Bible, Orthodox Christianity Weekly, so we can stay connected to our faith through the Holy Hill? Great question. I have a dream, and uh, people are a little nervous about that, but my dream is that you would be able to be connected to our Holy Cross Chapel on a daily basis. And you would actually see, hear, watch, pray with us during the Orthros and the Vespers and even the Divine Liturgy on Sunday. Another example, we will be having all of Holy Week services here. I'll be here serving with the students. So anyone in the New England area, when you go to your local parish, of course, go there first. But then if you'd like to come to us, you can join us here on the Holy Hill. So we are going to be doing that. Let's see, we have another question. What summer programs do you offer for young people or young adults in the college? There are a few that are, this is from a gentleman named Tom. You have more? Oh, that's great, lots of questions. The Kalinikion program is an immersion in Greek that we have currently for our students but there are some availability there for people who are from outside of our campus. There is the Patristic Institute. There is the Crossroad Program. That's for rising seniors. And this year alone, we had 114 applicants for 60 spots. So we had to turn away over 50 young people this summer because we didn't have the funding to do it. And we're hoping that next year we'll be able to double the funding so we can offer that program. Are you planning any new majors or offerings in the college and the School of Theology from Maggie? Well, Maggie, you read my mind. Uh, we are definitely through that Academic Affairs Committee. We're going to be setting up, we're first going to look at what we have and see how we can retool what we have. And then look and see what young people need today what degrees they're studying in other schools so that we can mark our degrees to match what they're looking for. So we're actively in that process. Actually, the letter is going out this week in the appointment of that Academic Affairs Committee. So you will be seeing both on the undergraduate and the graduate level, uh, possibly some new masters as well in the School of Theology. Not right away, we have to take it very carefully, we have to study it, make sure that we meet all the accreditation requirements, but we are going to do it. Uh, will you be expanding the management program major to include concentrations like accounting? That's a good one. You like that one, Mugu, right? Uh, this is from Mary. 
Absolutely, absolutely. We have some very good programs that we could add majors to or minors to. Management could have an accounting, a business law. There are different things that we could do with that. So that committee, thank you, the committee certainly uh, is going to be doing something in this area. We have to, we have to. Uh, you cannot offer what you offered years ago and expect that people are going to come just because you're offering it. We have to be, uh, I want to say, proactive and not reactive to anything. So let's look forward to what's happening. If I or other students, others want to study theology but can't move to Boston, will you offer degrees online? I want to study for the diaconate, but I want a theology degree. Will you offer that? Alex. I don't know, I, I guess these people are reading my mind. It's amazing that these questions are coming in. But this is exactly what we're going to do. Uh, part of the Academic uh, Affairs Committee is precisely this, to be offering online education. We do have, Alex, a diaconate program. If you go on our website at hchc.edu, you will find on that site the diaconate program. And I might add that the website is going to be redesigned within the next six months, and you'll see a brand new type of, uh, of look there, uh, the likes of which the best colleges in the nation would be jealous of. Let's put it that way. So, Alex, yes, uh, there will be degrees online. There will be, first, though, sort of continuing education online for our clergy. Did you know that there's really no continuing education program officially? for our clergy. When I went to school years ago, I graduated here in 1980, uh, 80, let's see, 77 from the college, 1980 from the School of Theology. There's no continuing education unless maybe a bishop or a metropolitan would offer a speech or a different program during their retreats, which they do. But something that's very systematic is not offered. The school in uh, coordination with the Archdiocesan Presbyters Council and with the blessings of the Eparchial Senate of Bishops of the United States of America is going to put that program together. So that will be happening as well. Any other questions? All right. So I want to sincerely, sincerely thank you for being with us today. I ask you to pray for us. I want you to know that we're praying for you every day, every morning, every night. We say prayers for you here on the Holy Hill. As we overlook Boston, we feel that responsibility. We see the chapel as a shining example of Christ's witness to the world. And with your help and your continued support, please go to our website, donate whatever you can during this Paschal season. May God bless you, grant you a blessed great Lent, what's left of it, and a glorious Pascha. Thank you so much.